this is more than I dare dream. And I'd like to take the opportunity to thank uh, Simon and Eric who have put together the single most impressive convention I have ever experienced. Yes. 
say this is a peculiar example of the kind of respect Riker has gotten consistently through the show. <laughs> there was a meeting of all the heavyweights from the Federation, as you probably recall. At all of the other spots, the uh, actors, captains of industry and others who were sitting there, were given bowls of um, chopped up whole wheat macaroni. Safe, relatively, one would think. At Riker's spot, a bowl of live grub worms. <laughs> Same director, Cliff Bowl, said, you know, Frank, what I thought would be great is if you dig your mitt right down in the bowl of grub worms, and then you hold it up over your face, we'll be in a really tight close-up. It'll look great. Oh, okay, that sounds great. <laughs> in the maggots, all them above my mouth, and sure enough, one of them. <laughs> mm, that's good worm. <laughs> I was younger then. It was also the same idiot who, in uh, Skin of Evil, on that episode, they said, you know, Rex, we'd like you to get into this uh, pit of black slime. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Can you just tell me what it is? And the, the stock answer for all these questions always is, it'll be fine. <laughs> they told me it was Metamucil and Black Printer's Ink. Okay. <laughs> so I get down in the pit of black slime, submerge myself like a schmuck, <laughs> and in the slime had been built a steel elevator, which as you may recall, pushes Riker up through the metal muse on the black printer's ink and vomits him onto the beach, onto the set. It's supposed to look like a beach. So I'm lying there, covered with this nonsense, and I'll never forget, LeVar comes over and sort of circles me like this. He looks down and says, oh, freight. I never would have done that, he said. <laughs> Captain of my own ship. 
It's that reason that he joined the Federation. It's that reason he joined Starfleet. It's that reason that he blew off the relationship with Troy. Consistently, he says, I just want to captain my own ship. In the script, they offer him the captain's chair of the Melbourne. I'm not ready yet, he says. <laughs> Looks like a whim, correct? A few months later, they offer him the captain's ship of uh, the Hood, I think, or another ship. Oh, well, I think I'd like to stay here with my friends, he says. <laughs> Come on, Riker! I made the mistake of uh, saying to the, uh, the journalist once, who asked me the same question, what I thought the real problem was, and that it was uh, bad writing. And went over, big, very, very big. I was very popular with Keller and the rest of the writing staff for a couple of years. And then mysteriously, all those ships that Riker was off in the best of both worlds, part two, the Melbourne. Date, 
and the very first thing we talked about was Star Trek. And I think it's kept us together ever since. <laughs> and it has provided us with hours and hours and hours of intellectual and interesting conversations. And it is positive, it is good, and it makes you think that man will go on forever. Thank you. to those of us who haven't been to the Academy, just what is a tertiary subspace manifold? And in the episode Schisms, where your arm was uh, surgically detached and reattached... I did that myself. Now, <laughs> ...is now, um, you know, less than a molecule from being correct, does this affect the uh, transporter pattern lock when you're passing through it? So, 
wasn't that much of a stretch, I'm afraid. How revealing. Hello. Good day. Hello, yes, I'd like to ask. Um, Lavar Burton said that his favourite character was sure. Data. What well, I'd like to say is your favourite character, Wolf. My favourite character is also Data. <laughs> I liked Warp until, until he started going out with Troy. <laughs> that put me off Warp forever. No, I'm a big Data fan and a big uh, Brent Spiner fan. Thank you. You know, Patrick's not bad. <laughs> Pretty amazing actor. Hello, hello, up in the back. Hello. Is that hello. Lieutenant Natasha Yar? Yes, that's right. Very nice. Thank you very much. My name is Dawn, and just before I ask my question, it's my birthday treat. That's why I'm here, and I'll be very grateful if you could blow me a birthday kiss. Oh, please. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Let's all say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you very much, and I hope you get my Valentine card with the two of <laughs> Now my question. Jonathan, yes. you are ultimately my favourite Star Trek actor ever. Yes. You are sexy. Yes. You are damn good looking. Yes. I just love the beard. Don't shave it off, ever. I hear that you did something very similar in October when you were Thomas Riker. Anyway, I think you've got a better body than Patrick Stewart in an out of the uniform. So you read all those notes I gave you? <laughs> I won't wait to ask you to pay me. Um, you are a real macho man, and really to be truthful, you are what I imagine the perfect Starfleet officer to be.
came to work with her, as I'm sure she told you. One day it was raining. The rat was wet. <laughs> Michael Dorn and I thought it was in the best interest of the rat to dry it <laughs> in the microwave. <laughs> Just kidding. Right, my turn now, yeah? <laughs> This, this was the one I was uh, going to ask Marina, and seeing as you've directed some of the episodes, you can probably um, answer this one anyway. All right. When she does the telepathic thing between herself and her mother in the program, does somebody actually say the words that they're thinking towards each other, or do they just really <coughs> time it and then they dub it in afterwards? Now, see, there's a question I can answer. <laughs> unlike, That's why. Unlike certain parties over here. <laughs> They read the dialogue from the script so that the timing will be uh, close to what it's going to be when they re-record the voices in post-production. So yes, they do read it while they're staring longingly, empathically at each other. <sighs> I knew I'd be able to answer one of these questions. <laughs> you got another tough one? No, it's not. Seeing as um, you're supposedly like uh, Captain Kirk and that you always get the leading ladies and all that sort of thing, who, who was your actual favourite one? Because my personal favourite was Minuet. My favourite leading lady? Yeah. Sitting over here in the booth. My beautiful wife. My leading lady on uh, the show. I'm a big Minuet fan too. <laughs> What's a computer generated girl like you that really gin joint like this? <laughs> And they never recurred. They always thought it would be a good idea if they'd come back onto the show. We had an idea once, and I asked the writers to put it in. If we were to be in the uh, observation lounge where we play those long, sometimes wordy and boring, uh, expositional scenes, <laughs> if we pan down the table and Patrick or LeVar or someone is reporting, and we pan across the board, or we pan across those big windows that are on the outside of the room, see a couple of binars out there washing the windows. <laughs> Episodes was the uh, seventh season episode Pegasus. 
uh, mainly because it had a little bit of conflict between you and Captain Picard. Do you think there could have been more episodes where there was conflict between you and the Captain? Yes, I do. Do I think there'd be more episodes where there was conflict between the Captain and uh, Wild Bill Riker? <laughs> One of the things that I found interesting, I suppose is a safe word, about uh, the late great Gene Roddenberry's vision was that he didn't encourage conflict, that he discouraged people who work together from actually having human conflicts with each other. And since Mr. Berman, Rick Berman has taken over the show, we're allowing a little more of it back into the show. I think there's room to go further in that direction. I think it's very human behavior. And uh, yes, I believe there will be more of it. I'll drop him like a three-foot putt and take that chair. <laughs> That's a question I've been asked before. What is the story with that? He's the first officer on a spaceship, on a starship. He goes in his closet, he opens the closet up, there's that one damn blue shirt there, that's it? And a uniform that doesn't fit? It's the 24th century, get a tailor in here. The Picard maneuver. Number one, my uniform doesn't fit.
pleasantly surprised. Patrick Stewart and I, on the first day we met, went for makeup tests and that sort of thing, and uh, I regaled him with the relative merits of baseball as opposed to cricket. He was having no part of it. But he's become a Dodger fan. I'm not sure if he admitted that to you when he was here. And a much sillier man than the one we met seven or eight years ago. <laughs> I don't think um, I don't think there's a better actor on television than, than Patrick Stewart, and I'm disappointed. In him. He deserves an Emmy. Should have been given an Emmy, but they never ask you. with your um, baby, if 
you're going to be taking <laughs> the baby with you or, or... Funny you should bring that up. Like a beautiful five-month-old baby boy. Jameson Patrick, I <laughs> My wife, Jeannie, just finished, actually, four o'clock in the morning of the day we flew here, shooting a movie in Los Angeles. And uh, Jameson was with us on the set every day, and he weathered it far better than either of us. So he will go wherever we go. Lucky him. <laughs> Of being a great television show and something you can be proud of being on. The opportunity to work 
in a situation like this, and I think it's a once in a lifetime experience that I was blessed to be part of, and I wish it continued, but it, uh, so be it. Well, now, don't make me cry. <laughs> I wouldn't dare, not for 6,000 people. But, um, well. <laughs> Actually, after standing around for two hours, it's tempting to ask you everything I can. But, um, it would be just nice to know that, uh, do you think you've actually learned anything after seven years of being on the show? Never separate the sauce of sexual without Patrick on board. <laughs>
Um, yeah. Firstly, um, in the outcast, would you have objected if the character that you fought for would be played by a male actor? I'm sorry? Uh, in the outcast. I was fine. I, was, I, was, I thought I was doing Peter Pan. It was just a quick moment. It's over. Go ahead. Um, in the outcast, would yeah. you have objected if the character that you fought for had been played by a male actor? In the outcast? Well, actually, I think if they really wanted to, to play that uh, story, they should have cast a male actor. That would have, I mean, go for it. If you want to tell the story, tell the story. Um, secondly, um, how, uh, it's already been sort of addressed, how do the American f fans compare, or see your opinion, because we're not all British here, um, how did they compare? How, I've never been to a convention quite like this. I must say this is as big and as exciting and as thoughtful and well-planned, and the questions have been great, the people have been great. I'm really, uh, I'm bowled over, as we say, in the States. <laughs> it's a treat. It's a treat to be here. Uh, Thank you for coming. Thanks for having us. Captain Picard, you know, each other very well indeed. Um, 
period, especially the episode where you're offered the chance to become a Q. Short question, do you find playing Riker more challenging than playing Ashley Long within the Waltons? You do know that, don't you? <laughs> Ashley Long with the third. The Waltons plays over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another military man, another naval man. Riker's turn, yeah, I like those dress whites he wore. I've had some interesting uh, experiences that prepared me for Riker. Ashley Longworth was obviously one of them. But when I was living in New York, I worked for a company called Marvel Comics. And my job was to go to uh, the opening of mini markets as Captain America. to 7-Elevens and to comic book stores and, uh, you know, street corners and sign comic books. And what you, what you would do, you'd go to Marvel Comics, which was on Madison Avenue, you'd pick up a bag that contained the uh, Captain America spandex ensemble. <laughs> My first experience with spandex. And then they'd send you off to some city with an itinerary of eight or ten places that you'd have to go, and they'd give you a bad Ford Taurus, and a driver who allegedly knew where you were going. So he'd drive me around, and we'd get a block away from the, uh, from the mini bar that we had to go to, and he'd say, okay, Freaks, or usually called me Fracas or Freakies, or whatever it said on his itinerary. Uh, your next spot is right here, you better get ready. So I'd be sitting in the back of the car, in full <laughs> Captain America regalia. I would pull the spandex cowl up over my head, Rip her on the plastic Captain America ears to the side of my head, go around to the trunk of the boot of the car, get out the garbage can lid with the big red, white, and blue star on it, and I kid you not, on my son, climb up on the hood of the car and ride into the parking lot. <laughs> That's how I got started. Hello, Jonathan. Hello. I'd just like to say my sister and I think you're great. Thank you. And um, my question is, in Generations, you didn't seem to have a very big part. Were there any parts of you that were cut out? Are you here with this other guy? <laughs> I didn't have a very big part in that movie, did I? No. If I hadn't separated the ship, it could have worked out differently. <coughs> it left me with a big old dumb stupid wharf. Uh, there were some parts that were cut out. I used to do all the scenes that Data had, but then they decided to get I'm just kidding. Hopefully there'll be more Riker in the next film. It's a diplomatic answer. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, there's <laughs> Riker. Um, do you like, would you like to play more parts to with him, Zardy? Pardon me? Would you like to play more parts to do with him, Zardy? More parts to do with him, Zardy? Of course, my, my uh, beloved. I think that they should capitalize on the uh, the Riker Troy relationship. I think a nice space marriage, maybe a Betazoid wedding. Of course, then we have to see. Jonathan? Sir? Hi. Hi. Just a quick question. Welcome to England. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Thank you. Riker's reputation to have uh, every girl in every uh, Stargate. How does he uh, manage to keep it up? Suit that doesn't fit. 
Is that because you're too much overweight? Yeah. Only <laughs> joke. Yeah, I think that's probably the problem. Yeah. This, the room has turned on me. <laughs> just to say that. Uh, just to say, I think you're a fabulous actor, and uh, thank you for all the episodes. Thank you very much. Before I go, I have something I'd like to share with all of you. Imagine if you will, we're on the bridge of the Enterprise, or I'm sure you've all been, and sitting over here is yours truly. The ship is rocked with phaser fire. I'm sitting in my chair, I drop myself around like this, and I get whacked by phaser fire, and the ship rocks, and the ship things. <laughs> And over here on the other side of the command circle is the lovely Marina Surtees, ship shake, making sure all of her hair is still in place. <laughs> and in the middle, our good captain, Patrick Stewart. <laughs> I will share with you what I am privy to during the battles of the Enterprise. I'm sitting over here being rocked with phaser fire in my head. Oh, Jonathan, Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan, Jonathan. Oh, 25 years in the Royal Shakespeare Company for this. 